Good grief. Why do they never go in for me? Hello, music lovers. Yes, I'm back again with a great big watch of vinyl. Hey. So, this is a batch of records I picked up at a car boot sale in uh, at Exeter Racecourse up on Heldon Hill uh, last summer or at the beginning of last summer in fact it might even have been spring last year but it's quite a hefty watch there we go look at that marvellous stuff and I picked all these up for around 20 quid I think the whole, the whole lot cost me 20 quid um, I'll go through what I got to amuse and delight you, as always. Right, the first record, um, I did already have a copy of this one, but I thought um, I would pick this up because it looks like it's, if it's not an original pressing, it's a very early pressing, and it's a record that I really like. Uh, James Griffiths, I think, sent me my other copy of it. Um, it's Carol King's Tapestry, which is a terrific record. I mean, what more can I say about this? Um, Song, the songwriting on here is, is just second to none. It's just fab, full of fabulous songs. Um, just just brilliant stuff, really. Uh, the, so, yeah, so the other copy I got is, on, is a later epic version, but there's the uh, Ode, Ode label. Um, showing it is an earlier pressing, I think. I think I got that right on Discogs. But it's a fantastic record, full of great songs. From I Feel the Earth Move, You've Got a Friend, uh, Smoke Water Jack. Brilliant stuff all round, love that. Oh, these, these records I got off one seller. These were £2.50 each. And I saw these and I thought, yeah, I'll get these. Um, I also got a copy of L. By Steve Hillage, erstwhile Gong member. This was produced by Todd Rundgren in, I think, at his studios in. America. So this is this is Steve Hillage's most successful solo album, um, released in 1976 on the Virgin label. And there's a rather lovely early Virgin label. Or maybe mid 70s. Not as early as something like uh, Tube of the Bells or something like that. So this reached number 10 on the British album charts. Um, there's some really interesting songs. It's got two covers. It's got a cover of Hurdy Gurdy Man on it, which is originally by Donovan. And he's got a cover of It's All Too Much, a George Harrison penned song, which are both good. Um, there's also a Hurdy Gurdy Glissando on here, which is kind of a more ragified, like um, using more uh, traditional Indian instruments on it. And it's also got a, um, a chant Om Namah Shivaya on here. But it's really, it's a really enjoyable album. I really enjoyed listening to this. Slight bit of damage on the cover there, but I thought 250 for a Steve Hillage album. Um, can't really go wrong with that. So that goes along with the live album that I picked up by him that I showed a couple of videos ago, I think. Maybe one or two videos ago, I'm not sure. But I'll definitely be looking out for more Hillage. Um, a bit of an ambient pioneer, really. I've got his Rainbow Dome music on CD which is a cracking ambient, early ambient effort. And uh, he, he got it, he was, he played on Orb Records and he's probably more successful now as part of System 7 with his other half, and I'm gonna massacre the pronunciation of this, Miquette Girodi is his other half. She, she's on this album as well. Um, absolutely fabulous stuff. And the other album that I picked up, and I've been meaning to listen to this for a long time, um, is Asia, 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 
I guess it's Asia, by Stevie Dan. Um, I got mixed vibes on this. I'm probably committing heresy here uh, because I know this, I'm pretty sure this is quite loved by people. Um, but it is so smooth. The playing, I mean, you can't fault the musicianship on this album. It is brilliantly played, but it's almost like every single rough edge has been knocked off it. Um, and I kind of, I don't know, I'm in two minds about this album. I can appreciate it, but it doesn't mean I actually like it that much. Um, I think another spin is in order, really, with this one. But it was, it was good enough. It was all right. Right, so I'm going to whip through these. I've got a whole wad. So this was this lot was all off one seller, and he was asking a pound each, and I walked up to him with this lot, and he said, oh, give me 12. I said, fair enough, here we go. Right, so I walked off with this lot. Um, real mixed batch of albums. Probably some that a bit that people would call cheese, some some cracking stuff as well. Um, real hodgepodge of stuff. So we'll start off, I'm just gonna go through these as they come up. So we got the Bee Gees. Uh, oh, Spirits Having Flown, which was their most successful album. This, this sold shed loads when it came out, absolutely shed loads. So it's the first album after the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Um, it's got, the big songs are Tragedy, I think Spirits Having Flown was a single. Was Too Much Heaven a single? I can't remember. But I did recognise quite a few of the songs as I listened to it, so they must have gone in somehow when I was listening on the on the radio. So it's got still got the inner sleeve, which is quite nice. On that RSO label. Another band who I showed a live album of a couple of videos ago. I think it's the same one as the Steve Hillage, I think. Um, it's a decent album. Um, some of it's a bit, a bit soft for my taste, but there's enough on here that I will listen to this again. And I do like, and I think I said this when I re when I showed the live album I got by them. Um, I like all, all eras of the Bee Gees, they're, they're, except maybe the late eighties, sort of their eighties output. I'm not. I kind of went a bit. You and again's a bit, mm. but this this is decent. That's a bad one, right? This is an album I've been looking out for for ages. I've wanted to get a copy of this for a long time, and it's Duran Duran's debut. Not the greatest shape cover, but it's got some cracking songs on here. I mean, any album that opens with the with Girls on Film and Planet Earth. As a, as a start off one two it's like you're onto a winner to be honest there's a label fairly plain label actually I would have expected something a bit more quite stylish but something a bit more in your face by it from them um, there's some really good stuff on here it's not as good as it's not as good as Rio and it's not as good as uh, notorious. But it's a good album. I really, really enjoyed this. Things like Night Boat, Tel Aviv, which is an instrumental, Careless Memories, which was their flop single. Anyone out there? There's some really good stuff on here. So I was really happy to find a copy of that for what worked out as less than a quid. Also picked up a copy of this, which was a really early concept album, to be honest. So this is Johnny Cash's Bitter Tears. Uh, it's an album highlighting the plight of Native Americans and how they were treated um, by the white man. Um, Ballad of Ira Hayes is an absolute heartbreaking song. So it's all about a guy, one of the guys who raised the flag on is it Iwo Jima, um, who were commemorated in that famous sculpture and the picture. Um, And it's such a sad fate, it's just a sad song. But this is a great, great album. 
just highlighting what was going on. And on the CBS label, there we go. So it's a bit of a scratchy copy. There's a few, there's no skips, but there's a few clicks and pops, but I'm well, well happy to pick that up for, for what I got it for. Really good stuff. Um, continuing the, going from possibly the sublime to the ridiculous, depending on your point of view. I also picked up a copy of this, which is a Carpenter's uh, song for you, released in seventy mm, one. Was it released in seventy one? It might have been. I'm sure it'll tell me on the inside or on the label. I'm going to show you the label. Seventy two on that old brown A and M label. The more I listen to the Carpenters, the more I realise that that Karen Carpenter had such a beautiful voice, um, and it just there's a couple of song, there's songs on here that made me wish wish that she just tackled a a, a wider range of material. Because she takes a Leon Russell song, a song for you, and it is fabulous, absolutely brilliant. Um, side one is really good. I mean, you've got Top of the World, which is an absolute MOR classic, but you've got some really good songs. You've got a Carol King song, it's going to take some time. Um, hurting each other. There's some top notch vocal performances in here. Then you've got some side two kind of lets the side down a bit you've it's got it's got an awful instrumental by richard carpenter um a couple of other bits and pieces um but towards the end it picks up again when you're crystal lullaby and road ode um you kind of wish that karen carpenter had got out on her own a bit more to be honest that's what it makes me wish anyway. So there we go. I also picked up a copy of a, band, a record by a band called Rainbirds. Now, I can't remember where I heard about this lot. I remember this lot being around in the, in the 80s and, and thinking, hmm. But then I think either on a video I saw or on the Facebook group, somebody was talking about this lot. About the time I picked this up and I thought, right, well, it's there, I'll have a look. And it's a pleasant enough album. It's not um, it's not earth shattering. It's a pleasant way to pass half an hour. But it is kind of a bit background music. It doesn't really grab you by the throat and go, listen to me, listen to me. Stop the washing up. Um, it's a decent enough record. On, what's it on? Phonogram? Did I say phonogram? Yeah, phonogram. Fairly plain custom label, but there you go. Yeah, I'll probably listen to it again. Sometime. <laughs> right. A bit of dance music now, and this is an absolute, this is a great record. So this is Inner City Paradise. Um, groundbreaking late 80s, sort of turn of the 90s techno dance band. Um, they had some massive singles. Fig, uh, Big Fun and Good Life were absolutely massive singles. Um, really, really good dance music. Um, on the on the internet review, well, a an internet review. It goes on about how Paris Gray is this powerhouse vocalist. Well, I can't see that she isn't. Um, I mean, her vocals suit the music, but she's not a powerhouse vocalist. Um, but that wasn't really the selling point of the band, to be honest. The music on here is, is almost robotic in its preciseness. Um, maybe taking a, uh, a leaf out of Sheep's book, um, but using um, more digital and synths and 
So there we go. I, I rec highly recommend this. Um, some people say it's a bit samey all the way through, but I, I think it works to its advantage. I think it just kind of bludgeons you with the, with the, with the, um, <laughs> some, of the, some, of the some of the brilliance of this, some of this stuff. Uh, absolutely brilliant record. Love Back to Pieces. Um, this is a bit of a ropey copy of this, but I was well chuffed to pick this up as well. So this is Stiff Little Fingers. Uh, I've got to get a new sleeve for this because it's really had it. Um, go for it. Still with the inner sleeve, but as you can see, we've got slippage going on. Great picture of the band there. So they're a Northern Irish punk band. Um, this was released in 1981 on Chrysalis. There we go. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a ropey old copy, to be honest. But when I I thought right, I've I've seen this. I've got to pick it up for a quid, and it's what it's quite enough because it's such a loud record. You don't really notice the surface noise so much, but it's. Um, it's great, really great. So you've got things like, probably better known tracks are like, uh, hang on, that's a piece, that's one side. There was a single of it. I don't know. Is it a third album? Maybe it's a third album. Uh, Just Fade Away, I think was a single of it. Go for it, maybe. Um, but it's moving away from the heads down, no nonsense punk of the first couple of records, and it's used and it, they're taking a leaf out of the Clash's book, and they're incorporating a lot of reggae stuff and slowing the pace down in some of it, and it really works as an album. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, the, the cover has had it, but again, for less than a quid, had to pick that up. I also had to pick this one up, and this brought back a lot of memories. So this is Super Tramp, Breakfast in America. I did have a copy of this before, uh, with a really nasty scratch across the whole of side two. But I picked this up, lovely condition record. Um, cover's not too bad as well. Um, but I got this really for, for logical sum of Breakfast in America, taking me right back to when I was about 10 years old. And those songs were everywhere and they got I remember them sticking in my head when I was 10 and they still are there it's a good album really enjoyed it another album I really enjoyed maybe I'm just like quite easily pleased I don't know lovely label actually there's the, there's the other side lovely label um, kind of Proggy pop. I mean, I think they started out as a more prog band, didn't they? Am I wrong at that? I don't know. Um, and they still incorporated some of that in their in their in their uh, music up until the late seventies. But this is by far their biggest selling album. Um, Massive in America. Take the long way home is a good song as well. Yeah. I did pick this one up as well. So here we got a bit of Boney M, Night Flight to Venus. Side one, what a, what a side of mute. Well, first four songs, brilliant. So we got Night Flight to Venus, which is some kind of bizarre sci-fi sounding, almost a film soundtrack, followed by Rasputin. And they kind of segue into each other. And then you got Painter Man, and he was a Steppenwolf, and that, that, those first four songs form a brilliant, brilliant, almost side of music. And then you've got this awful cover of King of the Road, and it is like almost MOR by numbers. It is awful. Then you've got uh, Riz of Babylon, Voodoo Night, Brown Girl in the Ring. Voodoo Night was all right. It's kind of highs and lows. Never Change Love is in the Middle of the Night is a fairly rope by numbers disco track. And then it's got a cover of Heart of Gold, bizarrely enough, by Neil Young, which which works fairly well, quite surprising, really. So I kind of always wanted a copy of, of 
Oh yeah. And I got my wish. So there we go. There's enough on here. Those first four tracks would keep me listening to that side. Um, the album as a whole is a bit, well. But Rasputin is just, that's what I liked about Boney M. They're so bonkers. They release things like Rasputin and Painter Man, which is a creation covered by a band, the band called The Creation from the 60s. Fabulous stuff. I did also pick up this one, White Snake, Live in the Heart of the City, but unfortunately it's only got one record in it, which is a shame, but it's the Live at Hammersmith record on UA, United Artists, and it was a great performance. It'll be nice if I can pick up the Live in the Heart of the City side now. Um, Really good bluesy. Well, you know what you get with early White Snake. And I didn't have anything by them apart from 1987 or whatever that's called. Is it self titled? You know which one I mean. I didn't have any of their early stuff, so it's quite nice getting this. Just round it out with a few 12 inches that I picked up uh, as well. That's part of the same batch. So I picked up a copy of Tom Belaine by the Family Cat. Family Cat were a British mid 80s indie band. Uh, on Bad Girl Records. And I remember them. There's one. One I remember really well is Steamroller. Really like that song. Uh, there we go. On Bad Girl Records. Re Tom Verlaine's a cracking track. Really cracking track. Love that. Um. Did I say midnight eighties? No, they were late eighties, sort of eighty nine, ninety, weren't they? This was recorded in spring eighty nine, so got me timing out there. But love that cover as well. Um, I also picked up three twelve inches by the same band. Um, the band is called the Dance Society, and I'll get those in the right order. So the first one I picked up, I think this is off their second album. This is Wake Up, and this is really gothy. Really gothy. Um, released in June, recorded in June 83. Um, you can tell they wanted to kind of be Bauhaus, really. But this is a good gothy record. Um, they then changed for the next album. I've got two 12 inches off their next album. I can't remember what the album's called. But they released a cover of 2000 Light Years From Home. Um, so the Ace, can you see that? It might be bleached out a bit by the light. <coughs> so the, the cover of the Stones track is kind of more um, almost poppy. Uh, whereas the B-sides of this one are definitely gothy. Um, and then you've got Seen the Light and Angel, the self-indulgent dub mix which is, yeah, they're still trying to be Bauhaus on their B-sides. And then they wanted to become Dead or Alive on this one, uh, which is a special edition club mix of Say It Again uh, with Fade Away and Sense of Miller. The extended Reuter pig mix. Yeah, they sound like they've been listening to Youthquake on this, and this was released in 85, I think. So, prefer the other two to this one. This one's kind of okay, but the other two are pretty good. And then just rounding this off with more goth. So this is Blum and the Angel. Uh, this is Day and Night. So this is one of their, maybe it's their first or second single that they released. Um, maybe their second, maybe their first one. I can't remember. Um, so they were kind of poppy, light, light goth band. Can you see that? There we go. Um, kind of middling, middlingly successful goth band. I remember them fondly. There's, they don't even look particularly gothy there, do they? Um, but I remember them fondly, and I've got a few, couple of albums by them as well on Chapter 22. So there we go. 
bit of a rough, rough and ready ride through a batch of car boot records. So, and that's it. That's your lot for now. So I will see you all again soon. Um, I am working, continuing to work on my uh, British Indian Me series. Uh, and I've got something else, a couple of other ideas in the pipeline that I hope uh, will come to fruition. So there we go. Thanks all for watching. Well done if you made it all the way through. Looking at it, it looks like about 25 minutes. I really got to get these timings down. I think um, people just get to bored with, with if you make it all the way. Well, most people don't make it all the way through. So there you go. Right. So thanks all, all for watching. And I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, BC. And anybody else that's watching. Bye.